So when we last left off, we were about to explain how the main molecules in marijuana affect the body. <laughs> no, it affects your body, maybe. <laughs> so I see you've already decided to celebrate 420, even though you explicitly promised you'd wait for me. Please, I saw you sneak a brownie earlier. Uh, I, um... Uh, uh, but, wait, what were we talking about? We're about to explain how weed gets you high. Hi, I'm Alex. Oh, oh, and I'm Xander. And welcome to the Science of Sin, where we explain why you're so good at being bad. Happy 420. Woo so if you remember from last time, delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, or THC, is the main molecule in marijuana that gets you high. THC is one of many molecules called cannabinoids found in cannabis. So how does it work? Well, in order to release the molecule from the plant into your body, you have to heat it up. That means burning or cooking your weed. You can also use what's called a vaporizer, a machine that heats the THC and other cannabinoids into the air so you don't have to inhale burnt up plant material as well. Once inhaling or eating the THC, it gets into your bloodstream. It attaches to special proteins called cannabinoid receptors. THC binds to the receptors that are found in many areas of your brain, firing up the feeling of being hot. Scientists only discovered cannabinoid receptors in 1990, so we're still trying to figure out what they do exactly. But they seem to play a part in regulating stress, memory, and hunger. So it makes sense that when THC enters your system and hijacks your cannabinoid receptors, stress, memory, and hunger are strongly affected. Wait, how so? Well, at first, uh, you start to feel really relaxed and some people feel less anxious. Uh, then euphoria kicks in. Everything just seems a lot happier and a lot funnier. <laughs> yeah, check and check. People also seem to feel more attuned to their senses, finding more enjoyment in the sight, sounds, and smells around them. It also seems to increase sex drive. <laughs> Sorry, what? Sorry, ooh. Yeah, your shirt just smells so pretty. People also get the munchies. They not only want to eat more, but they also find the taste of food more pleasurable. And small studies suggest that people don't actually sit down more times during the day to eat when they're high, but when they do sit down to eat, they eat a lot more. In fact, they have problems not eating everything in front of them. Mmm, mmm, Todd, that dinner was fantastic. And uh, thanks for all that uh, weed. You don't even know. I only spoke to you out to make sure you eat all the food. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have to ask though, what was that appetizer? It was so earthy and woody. It was, it was amazing. I never had an appetizer. There was no appetizer. Wait, are you talking about the napkin? Oh, wow. <laughs> well, that's embarrassing. <laughs> Although, do you have any more? Uh... People also experience enhanced levels of some forms of cognition. They find art from paintings and music to TV and movies more enjoyable and more meaningful. People also report feeling more insightful and more creative. Oh my god, Alex. You know what I just realized? What we're doing here now, like, um, like educating people, we could like change a whole generation. How they think, how they do with themselves. I mean, with sex and, you know, we're like doing God's work, really. I mean, you know, we're like 21st century angels right here. Oh. Okay, yeah, let's finish this up so I can be more on your level. <laughs> Another common cannabis symptom includes dry mouth. It also opens up your blood vessels and blood rushes through them, especially in your eyes, which turn red. Also, when you stand up, people can feel really faint. Also, it disrupts your short-term memory, your ability to tell how much time has passed, and your problem-solving ability. And finally, it usually ends up making people feel sleepy. It's the rare drug that has both stimulating effects, like with caffeine or cocaine, as well as sedative effects, like with Valium or heroin. In about 20 to 30% of people, especially those who aren't used to the feeling, it can cause panic attacks and paranoia, basically an increased sense of danger and hostility. Researchers aren't really sure why this is, though it could be genetics or it could be the type of weed you smoke. Oh, are there any other bad effects? Yes, but uh, let's not get into that just yet. It's 420, we should celebrate. But join us next week when we'll discuss all the reasons you shouldn't party too hard today, uh, all the effects of long-term use, addiction, and how it might lead to some psychosis, especially in teenagers. Oh God, psychosis? I mean, I've smoked so much, doesn't mean that, okay, am I gonna, oh my God, am I gonna, oh. 21st century angel, remember, remember. Uh, okay. And visit us at scientistsin.com where we're going to post all sorts of fun facts we didn't get to this week, like what's cheap, what's hash, and uh, don't forget 
to... Subscribe? Yes, subscribe. Whew, that brownie. <laughs> it's kicking in. Um, anyway, yeah, and also, please watch some of our other videos today. I have a feeling you might find them especially hilarious and incredibly insightful. See you next week. See you guys.